Hello! Alright, so I am very pleased to show you what a Hawk 250 looks like with 10,000 miles on it. That's not without a little grain of salt, however, because I was unable to reach the coveted 10,000 mile mark on the odometer because just about a few hundred miles before I was about to reach it, I completely wrecked the speedometer. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how it happened. If I can twist this little bit up a little bit, I think it somehow vibrated out of this thing and then got caught in my sprocket and then started twisting up like crazy. So um, you can see it's even still kind of twisted up a little bit in there. So I wasn't able to reach the uh, coveted 10,000 mile mark. But, I mean, you basically get the gist of it. Plus, I've been riding it around without the miles counting so long that it's probably at 10,000 miles. Not to worry, though, because I do have a fix for this, and believe it or not, it's not, um, the fix is not putting a new speedometer on it. Uh, I'm going to do a completely different upgrade. It's a far better upgrade than the system that I have now. So, I have this clipped right now. I cut it. Uh, just so I'm able to ride uh, without having this get in the way at all. I mean, I completely wrecked it. I think it vibrated out somehow. This video should take you through all of the steps and difficulty and problems that you might have um, with a Hawk that is coming up to about 10,000 miles. Or at least I'll tell you the problems that I ran into. By the way, I didn't overfill my crankcase. This, uh, my bike is just sitting on a non-level surface right now. And it normally doesn't look this nice either. I just put some turtle wax on it is all. So I did break a pair of handlebars uh, when I crashed in the forest. I mean, I just completely bent the crap out of them. So I have these pro tapers on them now. I smashed my sight glass. As you can see, this is not a Hawk 250 sight glass. This is actually for a Ninja 300. So I have the sight glass facing this way now. I've gone through about three different pairs of Bark Busters. That's my fault though, because I just kind of like changing them out. I'm never really sure which Bark Busters I like on my bike. This has an Acerbi's front fender. I believe I actually broke the previous one that's kind of made of these sort of cheapy stock, stock plastics right here. This Nibby that I installed about 9,000 miles ago has given me literally zero issues. So it's the absolute goat in this situation. It's given me no problems. If I need more RPMs, I turn this up. If I need less, I turn it down. It's a complete monster. Um, a lot of things like to vibrate loose on this bike is a really big safety concern. Like um, because of how many vibrations are going on in the crankcase, I did have to wire the bolts that attach my exhaust to the engine. I had to wire those so those don't vibrate out. They didn't actually fall out, but I did notice them beginning to back themselves out a little bit, so I did have to address that. The exhaust likes to vibrate as well, so I had to wire this, um, and so ensure that it won't vibrate out at all. Uh, my pegs as well. This hole right here was actually intended for this wire to loop through, but I found that just putting the wire on the bolt itself doesn't seem to pose any issues. I mean, this fix has been here for a while. Interestingly enough, I have not broken this rear plunger that goes to the brake light, which a lot of people do seem to break. It is an extremely delicate part. Um, I haven't broken it yet, which I'm pretty amazed by, but a big safety issue that I want to address here is I do have a wrench. I think this is either a 19 or a 17 wrench. I do have it holding this nut on because this thing likes to back off at some point. So I wired this to the back swing arm so it doesn't come out. However, that's not the end of the issue. I was riding, I was riding my bike um, on a pretty long ride. I think it was about a hundred mile ride and this didn't back out. However, the axle itself started to back out and then the nut was able to fall off even with the wrench still on. And then for like a couple hundred feet, I was just sitting on my spacers and luckily I didn't crash or anything, but I pulled over and I was able to fix it on the side of the road. So now I have this locked right there. Another thing you can do is you can just put the wrench for this size and like have it sit on the side of the swing arm here so that doesn't back out. But that was a massive safety hazard. I mean, if I was on public road or if I was in a faster environment, I could have possibly gotten hurt. I've switched 
the chain i've only switched it once i had the stock chain on i completely smoked it this is actually only the 20 dollar, 15 dollar chain that i got on amazon from jt sprockets i think it's a little tight too i should probably release some of that tension obviously the grips were replaced when i decided to replace the handlebars they're not a very expensive part this is a front brake from a ninja 300 um, just so it can fit into this reservoir right here um, this is a stock ninja clutch uh, clutch lever and I just decided to cut it there to give it more room for when I had my other bark busters on But now that I have these ones that don't really attach to the side It really serves no purpose now being cut and I might just get a longer one the forks have held up extremely well um, I've replaced two tubes in this front tire right here. I've never replaced the tire itself I mean, I'm sure you can tell it's super bald, but uh, I have another fix for that coming soon It doesn't really involve these stock wheels right here, but I'm gonna take care of that back tire fared a little well but Obviously, you can see it's starting to get pretty bald, starting to get a little bit unsafe. The engine itself is still the stock engine. All I did was spray paint it with caliper paint. Caliper paint actually has a higher temperature resistance than uh, the high temperature paint that you see at AutoZone. So um, that's why it hasn't really been flaking off that much. I mean, it's a lot more sturdier than the other stuff. So it's still the stock engine. I just gave it a paint job. But it also does have a uh, big bore kit upgrade in there. So I'm not really sure how that affects the review. I mean, the previous engine never really gave me any issues. I didn't do the upgrade because the engine was giving me issues. I just wanted more power is all. So, I mean, you can call that a rebuild if you want, but really all I did was replace the jug and uh, now it has a slightly bigger piston in it. What's really amazing to me is how I treat the bike. I do not treat it well at all. In fact, I treat it very poorly. I do not serve the Hawk. The Hawk serves me. I've been using it as a daily commuter for the past three years. Um, it's served me absolutely wonderful. Almost every day after work, I hit some trails, I hit some type of dirt road, something, uh, to use the suspension, have a little bit of fun. In fact, I abused the Hawk so much that I actually got a visit from the MPS, which is the Motorcycle Protective Services, and they came to my door and asked me a whole lot of questions about how I treat my bike and everything. Hi, I'm with MPS, which is the Motorcycle Protective Services. This is just a routine check. Your behavior regarding your motorcycle has raised a few red flags with us, and we just want to ask you a couple questions. Okay. Uh, could I get some water really quick? No, you may not. So how would you say you treat your motorcycle on a normal ride? Um, poor. Very poorly. Um, definitely not good. I would say al almost abusive, really. How often would you say you change your motorcycle's oil and toilets? Um, never. Really, never, never in the specified time. I mean, really, really at my own leisure, um, when it's most convenient for me. All right. How often would you say you let the motorcycle cool off to prevent overheating? Um, never at all. I mean, I run that thing red hot. I, I only stop when I get where I'm going. So no, no cool off time, nothing like that. How many times on average, on an average trail ride, would you say you crash? Maybe two, maybe three times an hour. Oh wow, oh my goodness. So if I pull my rear axle out enough to take this tensioner out, I gotta tell you that this thing is actually sitting in there broken. But it doesn't really appear to cause an issue while it's sitting inside. But I do have a fix for this. I do have much stronger, thicker chain tensioners that I'm going to do as part of my next upgrade. So for now, it's just sitting in there because it doesn't really seem to cause as much of an issue as I thought it would. But I guess at some point, I must have snapped the weld on it or something. Maybe I put a little bit too much tension on it. But yeah, it's completely broken but I don't recommend riding on it at all. If you plan on riding one of these bikes up to 10,000 miles, Shell Rotella is going to be your best friend. Some type of silicone spray is going to be your best friend. Uh, Loctite is going to be your best friend because these bolts like to jiggle off, these bolts like to vibrate off. There's only a single cylinder down there and it causes a fair amount of vibration. So a lot of these things have a tendency to vibrate off so one of the caveats of owning this is every now and then just putting your hands on stuff and checking to see if something's loose so you don't get hurt or put yourself in danger later oil cooler still doing well i'm pretty sure most of the people can tell that this front screen that i put on is actually just some kind of document organizer so i might put
put something else on there just to make it look a little bit cooler. However, it has been doing its job and it has been protecting it pretty well. And I think I have to switch this hose with the other one because I think that this is actually the return hose. So the oil is traveling up here. So this oil filter screen isn't really doing anything. I don't think it's filtering any of my oil. So I'm gonna double check that and I think I'm gonna swap it around with these right here. For 2,000 bucks. 10,000 miles with virtually no issues other than the typical maintenance and just checking for things that might go wrong on a cheap bike. 10,000 miles to me is absolutely ridiculous. I can't believe it's given me this much fun, this many memories, this much usability, and I take it to work every day. It serves me so well. It's, it's really just an amazing bike. And not only that, it doesn't just work, it works well, which is just bizarre to me. I say pick one up before they start going up in price. Um, it's a hilarious value for your money. I love my Hawk. I don't really think that I'll ever not own a Hawk just because of how usable it is. If you dump it, it it's not as heartbreaking as dumping your $10,000 bike just because it didn't cost you that much. And it gives you so much usability. I feel like true luxury is something you can abuse because it's not that you don't care about what happens to it. It's that if something happens to it, the cost is not that great. I mean, literally the most catastrophic damage mechanically that can happen to this bike is probably engine failure. And that'll cost you 500 bucks, which is just amazing. So that's the end of my review. Uh, leave me any questions you have in the comments and take care.